If the battery in your remote dies or the signal is interrupted, you can still get into your vehicle and start it using the removable key inside the fob to unlock the driver's door. Just press the button on the front of the key fob and slide the key out. Now, depending on which model you have, you can either insert it into the exposed key cylinder and turn to unlock, or you may need to insert the key into the slot in the fender badge between the front fender and the driver's door to unlock the door, or pull the door handle out. When you do, you'll notice the key cylinder is located at the end of the handle here. Just insert the key and turn to unlock. Once you're in, there's a space made for the fob to fit in the center console. It'll allow you to start your vehicle. With the buttons facing up and the unlock button toward the front of the vehicle, place the key fob in the slot. Keep in mind, because the key is programmed to your car, if you lose it, you'll need to contact your dealer for a replacement. One more thing, to help prevent locking the key fob inside of the vehicle when using the door lock, depending on how the vehicle is set up, if left inside, you may hear a horn chirp indicating the fob has been left in the vehicle and the doors will not lock. If the battery in the key fob has died, changing it is simple. First, remove the key from the fob. Next, using a coin, twist it under the tab hidden behind the key head here. Now, insert a small screwdriver into the position shown and carefully remove the battery. Install the new battery with the plus side facing up and replace the cover. Now I'll explain how to jump your vehicle's low battery. First, park the vehicle you're going to use to help with the jump start as close to your vehicle as possible without touching and turn the engine off. Some vehicles may have a battery cover that needs to be removed. Remove it by gently pulling up on the cover from its fasteners keeping in mind that some vehicles may have screws which will need to be removed first. Next, connect one of the positive cables to the positive terminal of the discharged battery. Connect the other end of the positive cable to the positive terminal on the booster vehicle battery. Now, connect the negative cable to the negative terminal on the booster vehicle battery. Make the final connection of the negative cable to the metal ground post located at the rear of the engine compartment on the driver's side here or to an exposed metal part of the stalled vehicle's engine away from the battery or fuel injection system. Now, start the booster vehicle's engine and gently accelerate to between 2,000 and 3,000 RPMs for about a minute. You should then be able to start the stalled vehicle's engine. Finally, remove jumper cables in the reverse order that they were connected and reinstall the battery cover if equipped. We hope we've answered your questions. For more information, please visit owner.lincoln.com.